Every prospector dreams of that glint of yellow in the pan, the moment when hope and hard work finally pay off. There's nothing quite like the thrill of swirling water and sediment, waiting for that flash of gold to appear. The weight of a nugget in your hand is more than just metal, it's the reward for patience, skill and a little bit of luck. But what if you could tip the odds in your favor? What if I told you there's a secret the old-timers knew, a signpost that can lead you straight to gold? These seasoned prospectors didn't just rely on luck, they read the land and the rocks, searching for subtle clues that most people miss. It's not a gadget or a fancy map, and it's not about having the latest technology. Sometimes the best tools are knowledge and sharp observation. The real secret is a family of minerals, sulfides. These minerals are often overlooked, but they're one of the most important clues in the hunt for gold. Learning to spot these minerals is like having X-ray vision for gold. With practice, you'll start to see patterns and signs that others walk right past. Most new prospectors ignore rusty rocks or toss aside fool's gold, missing the real clues. But those rusty stains and metallic glimmers are often the first hints that gold could be nearby. Sulfides are gold's traveling companions. Where you find them, gold is often close by, locked inside or nearby. These minerals form under the same conditions as gold, making them reliable indicators. Think of sulfides as the treasure map, gold as the treasure. If you can read the map, you're already ahead of the game. By learning to identify minerals like pyrite, arsenoporite, and chalcopyrite, you're adding powerful tools to your prospector's toolkit. You're reading the language of the rocks, interpreting the signs that nature leaves behind. These minerals tell the story of the same earth processes that create gold. They reveal where hot fluids once moved through the earth, depositing both gold and sulfides together. Ignore them, and you're searching blind, wandering past the best spots without even knowing it. But once you know what to look for, your odds of striking gold skyrocket. Suddenly every rock and outcrop becomes a potential clue. So, let's dig into what sulfides are, why they matter, and how you can use them to your advantage in the field. We'll explore how they form with gold, how to recognize them, and what their presence really means for your search. And most importantly, you'll learn how to spot them in the wild, turning every outing into a real opportunity. Get ready to unlock the sulfide secret and change the way you prospect, because the next big gold discovery could be just a rock away. So, what are sulfides? Simply put, they're minerals formed when metals like iron, copper, or arsenic combine with sulfur deep underground. For gold prospectors, only a handful matter pyrite, fool's gold, chalcopyrite, and arsenopyrite. Pyrite is brassy yellow and cubic. Chalcopyrite is more golden and softer. Arsenopyrite is silver white to steel gray. These minerals form from hot, mineral-rich fluids, hydrothermal solutions, circulating through cracks in the earth. As the fluids cool, metals and sulfur crystallize out, creating veins and pockets of sulfides. This is the same process that forms gold deposits. Sulfides aren't random. They're evidence of the right geological event for gold. Gold often travels in these same fluids, so finding sulfides means you're in the right neighborhood. A quartz vein laced with pyrite or arsenopyrite is a strong signal. You found the mineral factory. Now it's time to see if it produced gold. Understanding sulfides is the first step to finding the mother load. How does gold get mixed up with sulfides? It's a fascinating process that takes place far beneath the Earth's surface, where intense heat and pressure create a unique environment for minerals to form and interact. Gold and sulfides don't just randomly appear together, they're brought together by powerful geological forces over millions of years. Deep underground, hot, mineral-rich fluids, known as hydrothermal solutions, move through cracks and fissures in the rock. These fluids are loaded with dissolved metals including gold and sulfur. As they travel they cool and begin to deposit their mineral cargo. When sulfide minerals like pyrite or arsenopyrite start to crystallize from these fluids, they can trap tiny particles of gold within their crystal structure. This gold is often so fine that it's invisible to the naked eye, earning the name invisible gold. It's locked away, hidden from simple prospecting methods like panning or metal detecting. In some cases, gold doesn't just hide inside sulfides, it forms right alongside them. You might see visible flecks of gold nestled next to pyrite crystals, or even veins of gold weaving through sulfide-rich rock. These visible associations are exciting finds for any prospector. Whether the gold is hidden or visible, the presence of sulfides is a strong indicator that gold could be nearby. 
experienced prospectors know that rocks rich in pyrite or arsenopyrite are worth a closer look, even if there's no obvious gold in sight. That's why a saying is so important. A rock that looks like nothing more than fool's gold, might actually contain significant amounts of real gold, hidden within the sulfide minerals. Only careful laboratory testing can reveal the true value of these rocks. In fact, many of the world's richest gold mines process huge quantities of sulfide ore that show no visible gold at all. The gold is there, but it takes modern technology to extract it. In these cases, the sulfides themselves are the ore, and the gold is the hidden prize waiting to be unlocked. It's a partnership forged deep within the earth and it's the key to many successful mining operations. So, don't walk away just because you don't see gold on the surface. Let the lab results guide you. There could be a fortune hidden inside those sulfide-rich rocks. Remember sulfides and gold are true partners in the earth's crust. Learning to recognize one means you're often just a step away from discovering the other. Out in the field, you crack open a rock and see shiny minerals glinting in the sunlight. It's an exciting moment. These metallic flashes could be clues to something valuable hidden beneath your feet. But how do you know what you found? Is it pyrite, chalcopyrite, or arsenopyrite? Each of these sulfide minerals looks similar at first glance but they tell very different stories about what might be nearby. With just a hand lens, a steel knife, and a streak plate, you can confidently tell them apart even if you're miles from the nearest lab. These simple tools are all you need to become a mineral detective in the field. Pyrite stands out with its brassy yellow color and distinctive cubic crystals. It's hard to scratch with a knife and when you drag it across a streak plate it leaves a greenish black streak. Pyrite is often called fool's gold but it's a valuable clue in its own right. Chalcopyrite, on the other hand, is more golden and often shows a purplish or iridescent tarnish. It's noticeably softer than pyrite, so your knife will scratch it easily. Its streak is also greenish-black, but the color and softness help set it apart. Arsenopyrite is different again. Look for wedge-shaped crystals with a silver-white to steel-gray color. When you strike it, it gives off a distinct garlic smell and its streak is a dark gray. This mineral is a key signpost for gold. The smell test is crucial for arsenopyrite. Strike the sample and sniff for that unmistakable garlic odor. It's a quick way to separate it from the others, especially when visual clues aren't enough. Use every clue you have, color, crystal shape, hardness, streak, and even smell, to confidently identify your find. Each test adds another piece to the puzzle. If you spot arsenopyrite, pay close attention. This mineral is one of the best indicators that gold could be nearby. Mark it in your notes and investigate the area thoroughly. Systematically check each mineral you find. Compare color, shape, hardness, streak, and smell. Careful observation and methodical testing are the keys to success in the field. You don't need fancy equipment, just a sharp eye, a curious mind, and a few simple tools. These basics will serve you well on any prospecting adventure. Mastering these field tests means you can spot gold's best friends right on the hillside, turning ordinary rocks into valuable discoveries. The right identification can transform a random rock into the start of a gold rush. Every mineral you recognize brings you closer to a big find. Field skills are your edge. Use them, trust your tests, and let your knowledge guide you to the next big discovery. Deep underground sulfides are stable, but at the surface they oxidize, rusting away to form crumbly iron-stained rock called gosen. To a beginner gosen looks like worthless rust, to a pro it screams dig here. As sulfides break down, gold locked inside is freed and concentrated near the surface. This process called supergene enrichment creates some of the richest gold zones on earth. Old timers targeted these rusty caps for easy gold. Look for red, orange, yellow, or brown outcrops, porous, lightweight, sometimes with box-like cavities, boxworks. Sample across the gosen and pan for free gold. Even if you don't see much, assay the samples, the real prize might be just below. Gossens are nature's gold markers, don't ignore them. Train your eyes for rust, and you'll find the gold others miss. Ready to hunt gold with sulfides? Here's your step-by-step -step plan. Start with research. Study geological maps and old mining reports for sulfide-rich areas. In the field, look for quartz veins, iron staining, and gossens. Mark promising spots on your map or GPS and take detailed notes. When you find visible sulfides or heavy staining, sample across the vein or zone, not just the prettiest piece. Label and record every sample. Crush a bit and pan for free gold, but don't stop there. Send your best samples for fire assay to reveal hidden gold. 
The assay tells you which spots are hottest. A few grams per ton is a great result. Follow up on those areas. Systematic sampling and testing turn clues into discoveries. This methodical approach is how real gold finds are made. Be thorough, be patient, and let the rocks guide you. Using sulfides to find gold isn't just theory, it's how the world's greatest gold districts were discovered. The Carlin trend in Nevada, over 90 million ounces of gold, found by following pyrite and arsenic sulfides. California's motherlode miners chased quartz veins rich in pyrite and arsenoporite, not just visible gold. Cal Gourley's Golden Mile in Australia, massive gossons led to sulfide-rich ore bodies packed with gold. In every case, prospectors read the rocks, followed sulfides, and struck it rich. The lesson, don't hunt for gold alone, hunt for its mineral companions. Sulfides are the signpost to the world's biggest gold finds. Learn to read them, and you're prospecting like the legends. If you remember one thing, let it be this. Sulfides aren't a distraction, they're the path to gold. Focus on the mineral systems, not just the color, and your odds of success soar. Learn to identify pyrite, chalcopyrite, and arsenoporite with simple field tests. Train your eyes for rusty gosens. They're often gold-rich caps. Be systematic. Research, map, sample, and assay. An assay is an investment in knowledge, not just an expense. The best prospectors make their own luck by following the clues sulfides provide. Every rock you crack, every rusty stain you sample is a step closer to gold. Sulfides are your allies. Treat them as such. Keep learning, keep exploring, and let the rocks tell their story. The gold is out there waiting for those who know what to look for. May your pan be heavy and your eyes sharp.